Her name was Nadia. She was 14. It was 1976 at the Montreal Olympics. Remember? Chris, this could be the highlight of the compulsory event. She is one of the technically strongest, best gymnasts that I've ever seen. Kathy Rigby knew she was a fine competitor. She had proven that at the European Championships a year earlier. However, as she performed this memorable routine, we witnessed unprecedented excellence. She was shattering all previous standards for women's gymnastics. Look at that, right to the handstand. Gorgeous routine, beautiful, and the crowd loved it. The crowd did indeed respond, but the impact of what had happened was yet to come. As we watched the replay, this historic moment of truth exploded in the arena. And it is. A perfect 10. A perfect the first one. The first it was the first perfect 10 in Olympic history, but it was only the beginning. She left Montreal with six more 10s and three Olympic gold medals. This initial expression of joy, however, was lost in the pressure of competitive moments and years to come. We seldom ever saw her smile again. This is Nadia now. You ever come out here with your, your lunch and have a picnic and eat here? I didn't have time. I forgot you don't eat, right? This is Chris Shankle. Kurt Thomas and I have come to Romania for a national celebration given in Nadia Comaneci's honor. She is announcing her official retirement. She will never compete again. Nine countries have sent representatives to honor her. In addition, Juan Antonio Samaranch, the president of the International Olympic Committee, is here to present her with a special award. She will be performing publicly for the first time in three years. And for someone who has dealt so often with perfection, she is under a great deal of self-imposed pressure. It's quite a moment for her and for us. Our last look at Nadia as a gymnast, coming up on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Six Olympic Games in Montreal. You've already learned that Nadia Comaneci will be here in Los Angeles during the Olympics working with the Romanian gym team. Recently, she said an emotional farewell to the sport which made her famous in Bucharest, Romania, and our Chris Schenkel was there. Bucharest is a town that sometimes seems to try to be Paris, yet it has its own dignity and pride. The pride is well manifested in monuments honoring moments of Romanian glory and memorials to citizens who sacrificed in times past. There is today, however, a living national treasure who is idolized by the country's youth and whose amazing accomplishments fill all Romanians with a sense of pride. She burst upon the international gymnastics scene on a tournament called Champions All in London in 1975. She wowed the crowd and the aficionados as well. She had been a Romanian secret weapon. Here she took her first world-class step toward the Montreal Olympics. A 13-year-old prodigy with a Mona Lisa countenance. Her name was Nadia Comaneci. Kurt Thomas and I have come to Romania not only to join others who are about to honor her in a special feat, but also to visit with her, see where she lives, learn what her life is like today, and set the record straight on some of the controversial issues which plagued her during the ups and downs of her intensely competitive years. I'm Chris Schenkel. We're standing in front of the Bucharest Palace of Sports and Culture. And the best way to put this event in context is to refer to this Romanian newspaper. As you can see, there's a picture of Nadia Comaneci. It says that you'll see Nadia Comaneci in a festival in her honor. And it also goes on to praise her incredible career when she dominated the world of gymnastics for 10 years. Now, the festival itself is in two parts. First, there is friendly competition. She is not involved. Then, there is a festival of children, a tribute to her. The friendly competition has been completed now and the festival has begun. Children from gymnastic schools all across Romania are participating in this show of admiration for their most famous champion who is about to perform for the last time publicly. I'm with former three-time world champion Kurt Thomas. And despite the festive gala, we along with the rest of the crowd 
are really here for one reason. Uh, we came here to pay our last respects to her and watch the, the final competition, the farewell of Nadia. And I'll tell you, it's sad for me to say, and, but I hate to see her retire. She's doing so well. I watched her in the gym the other day. She's doing terrific. And it's kind of sad to see. But, you know, I did get to spend a little time with her, and she's, she's a different person from the person we saw in 1976. Well, let's go inside and watch. Okay. All right. There's Nadia, surrounded by spectators and press, preparing for the first of her two exhibition performances. Let's look back and trace her extraordinary gymnastics career. She was born Nadia Elena Komenich. By the time of this film, at age 10, she had already been immersed in gymnastics for four years. She was always determined. Her first vivid recollection is at age two, toppling a Christmas tree while trying to reach some candy. The tree fell on top of her, but the candy remained clutched in her tiny hand. Her mother tells of Nadia being obsessed with tree climbing. Nadia simply says she was a tomboy. In her hometown of Onesht, the six-year-old child's day began with four hours of training, then academic classes in the afternoon. In time, more practice was added in the evenings. She ate lunch and dinner at what we would call a training table, then took the 10-minute walk to her home and her homework and sleep. Eventually, she moved into the hostel, connected with the new gymnastics hall in Onesht, but she remained close to her family. She loved gymnastics, and the life of a developing athlete was just plain fun. After preliminary training by early coaches, Bella Caroli became her Svengali. In her biography, Nadia says, Bella demanded absolute obedience and had complete power over us. In her first competition at age nine, she helped her team win the Romanian National Championship. However, she remembers most her humiliation in falling off the beam three times. Yet as the years progressed, Bella, the demanding coach, continually and consistently supported and led her quest for perfection. That quest took hold when she upset the Soviet reigning champion Ludmila Turistcheva at the 1975 European Championships. It was the first of three such victories. Then on to Montreal. Her first perfect 10, followed by six more 10s out of 16 performances. That accomplishment was so extraordinary and unprecedented that the Olympic scoreboard could not accommodate a score of 10. Well, the officials improvised as best they could by registering a one to the crowd. As the genius of her technical ability became more and more validated by the judges, the press became somewhat unkind. While continuing to praise her gymnastic ability, they harshly characterized her personality. They called her Little Miss Perfect, the gym machine, and the ice queen. We now know their criticism was unjust. She simply was a shy 14-year-old athlete concentrating on the sport she loved. In 1977, the Romanian team walked out of the European Championships in protest of the scoring. And then, as we see here, a different Nadia appeared at the 78 World Championships in Strasbourg, France. She was taller, yes, but most of all, she had put on more than 20 pounds. Although she won a gold medal on the beam, somehow her floor exercise reflected the adolescent frenzy of a girl trying to hold on to childhood in the face of burgeoning maturity. A year later at the World Cup in Tokyo, amid unfounded rumors of actual suicide attempts, Nadia arrived, jet-lagged, adorned with a Mickey Mouse t-shirt. She then blew the gymnastics world away one more time by revealing herself now as a magnificent young woman with the same talent and ability she had in the past. At the World Championships in Fort Worth shortly thereafter, she paid the price for the intensity and deprivation involved with her comeback. She was unable to overcome an infection in her wrist, 
after bravely competing in the beam to keep her team in contention. She had to withdraw with the echo of a fan shouting, we still love you, Nadia. After the Moscow Olympic Games, where she won two gold medals and a silver in the all-around, the world's last look at Nadia was here at the World University Games that were held in Bucharest, Romania in 1981. She lighted the torch to inaugurate the festivities. And she responded to that honor by scoring a perfect 10 in the floor exercise, another 10 in the vault, and winning a gold medal in the uneven parallel bars. Again, this was three years ago. She hasn't competed or trained since. This was the last time she was seen in competition. Now Nadia is a student at the University of Bucharest. She has also become an international judge and now is head coach of the Romanian national junior team. Underneath the respect of her students here is great admiration for this wonderful athlete. She puts him through a vigorous workout. Recently, Nadia has gone back into intensive training to prepare herself for her final appearance. She's nervous and she's tense. But the crowd in the hall awaits her two final routines and so do we. Preparing to work the balance beam. This one minute routine, Chris, is gonna feel like an hour to her. She's very tense, very nervous at this point. But as you can see, she's concentrating. Is she thinking of about falling at this point? I don't think a champion thinks of any type of negatives. I think she's thinking right now, stay on. What to do right, not what to do wrong. I'll tell you, I've spotted a negative around this uh, narrow beam. The many still photographers, that has to be an unbelievable distraction for her. It really is, and, and especially the, the flash cubes. Now there's her press to a handstand, straddle press to a handstand. She's done so many times. And the gainer back handspring. Very nicely done. Typical dance. It was a full turn, one of the requirements on this event. And she doesn't look nervous now, does she? Two-time Olympic gold medal winner on the beam, Montreal and Moscow. You know, she put so much time in on this event, and I'm not surprised that she's doing as well as she is right now. Here comes the difficult one. Ariel, walk over. No problem. Full house, loving it. You know, Chris, they would love anything she would do right now. <laughs> she could walk back and forth, and, and that's it. Jump off, and they'd love it. Looks like a little bit of an ankle problem there. Mm -hmm. Maybe she's had some problems in training. She's got a little tape on it. Here comes her Valdez. 